Radio Retro Future. Welcome to another episode of Radio Retro Future. And today I have the Wild Steampunk, or as you may know him as Jonathan Vesmeyer. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Bonzar? Yeah, let's just start with who are you, what do you do, and um, you also wanted to uh, address something else, I think. Yeah, I know. I, well, I said it's several things. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get to things. Uh, so I'm. Uh, my name is Jonathan Fessmeyer. Uh, I write steampunk uh, fiction. I've got a blog called the Wild Steampunk Blog, where I talk about I talk about that. I, I talk about all sorts of steampunk things. Um, I review uh, cosplay patterns. And, you know, the the sewing company McCall's puts out. They they put out a ton of cosplay patterns and they send them to me uh, every month and I and I review them and I talk about how I think they might they can work for steampunk. Um, I should I've got one here that I've got a one of one of three I've got to review soon. So uh, these are amazing and yeah and a lot of fun. What makes me wish I I, uh, I could sew, but you know I've got enough I do so. Uh, so that I've got a, a channel here on YouTube called the Wild Steampunk. Where I talk about writing, and occasionally I do a podcast. So I've got it, but I've got a writing series, a new writing series called Write Tip, where I, uh, yeah, where I, I just talk about various, yeah, just various tips for for, mm -hmm. for writers on on various um, topics. And I am finishing. I'm on the. I've, 12 chapters to go. There are 60 chapters in this novel. Uh, finishing my novel, Bodacious Creed, a steampunk zombie western. I'm on the I'm on the final draft, and then, I'm, of course, I'm going to read through it um, again after I get all the writing done. I'm going to read through it aloud, which is a really good way to catch yeah. uh, mistakes and make sure everything is really smooth. So, and I think that after that, it'll be ready to, finally ready to publish and to, to finally get out there to people. So, and I've got a lot of people look, looking forward to reading that, so... Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, just get into Bodacious Creed. What what is it about? So it's about a. Uh, so it takes place in an alternate, obviously uh, Wild West. Uh, the the novel takes place in 1876. Main character is a U.S. Marshal, and now I I discovered that the U.S. Marshal Service didn't actually exist then. So I so in in that world though it did. I I kind of came up with another reason why it started earlier in my fictional world after the Civil War. President after Lincoln, after Lincoln was assassinated, created the U.S. Marshal Service in order to facilitate the transition in the South uh, from, you know, uh, slave states to, you know, no more slavery to, to make to make that smoother and safer. Um, and so that's kind of how they started in 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 my world, and then you know, so the service just already exists in 1876. So the main character is a, a famous U.S. marshal who's you know captured lots of outlaws and and killers and whatnot, and he comes to uh, he he's after a, a murderer in Santa Cruz, California. Now I'm from Santa Cruz, so I wanted to uh, kind of make that the setting. And one thing I did that I that I think is fun. My Santa Cruz isn't exactly historically accurate. It's more like uh, modern-day Santa Cruz, but in 1876, in the sense that the streets, uh, you know, the layout of the of the city is is like it is now, um, kind of some of the personality of it. So it's it's very much an alternate version. But I wanted a, a version that modern readers from Santa Cruz would kind of could kind of look at and go, oh, I know where that is, and I know where that is, and oh, that's cool, and you know, I can see where that's going. Some of it is historically ac accurate. I mean, to to a degree, some some characters and things are actually historically uh, historical people. So he goes there, and I don't want to give too much away, but this is kind of part of the premise of the book, and and everybody will kind of know, know anyway. So he gets killed, and he gets brought back to life with with steampunk technology, and so he's sort of kind of a technologically risen uh, zombie character, though you know he's. He's got mostly got all his faculties and and things, and, and he's still after the same killer. So yeah, so that's that's kind of the premise of it. And let's see what else. What what else? Are we in? The, uh, some of the I don't know. Some of the historical characters are like the mayor in the stories. The actually was the mayor at the time. Um, the main general store is is run by his brother. That's actually historically accurate, although I've changed the location. The another main character is a brothel madame. A, a young woman, very intelligent, who um, secretly is also an inventor and works for a, a big company that that makes automatons. Um, yeah, so it's got it's got basically robots, and of course they're called automatons or steelies in my world. And yeah, 
yeah, so it's definitely it's got this you know the steampunk elements and uh, the yeah, and the uh, lot of wild west adventure. Right, and what inspired you to to write this book? Because this is your typical post-apocalyptic zombie western, like. Uh, Oh, it's it's not post-apocalyptic. It's um, I don't think I would call it typical in any way. No, no, it isn't. Yeah, the, and the zombies are definitely not. Uh, their origin, at least, isn't the same as as in a lot of zombie things where it's like a virus or something. This is actually Creed, Bodacious Creed, main character, is actually you know it's actually machinery that that brings him back to life. So, but he's sort of still uh, you know a, a kind of zombie. It it started. I, so I got my my master's in animation and visual effects, and we were supposed to come up with your thesis when you're doing this. You, you that major, um, you need to create a demo reel. So my focus in animation and visual effects is 3D modeling, and so my dim, and so for my demo reel, uh, you're, supposed, you're supposed to actually come up with a theme for it, so you're not doing just kind of random models. So it's exactly. you know, yeah. and then here, it was also a way to study. How in the industry, either primarily film, but I, I, I think it would go for for gaming too. How you come up with, how you go through the whole pre-production phase and and all that, and creating our, our the demo reel was kind of mirroring how a film works. In the pre-production phase, I I came up with this steampunk western idea, and I wanted to have a, a steampunk gunslinger and uh, and a brothel uh, madame, and uh, and then you're supposed to have some kind of animal. And I could have had a, a, like a steely a robot in there too, um, but I ended up narrowing it down. Um, but then my uh, professor kind of pushed me forward. He's like, "Can you, you know, let's, yeah, just kind of push it. Try, try some, you know, do, do some kind of a, something different." And so I decided to have the uh, main character be sort of the gunslinger character have died and then brought back with a steampunk technology which makes him make it a, a kind of a, a zombie so mm -hmm. um so that's so so you know you, it's bodacious creed a steampunk zombie western and when you hear that it's kind of how does that all fit together but it actually fits together very organically it makes perfect mm -hmm. sense and so he um and you know and, and so yeah so i went with that and i was uh i woke up one morning with the the name bodacious creed for the main character in my head so he's called Bodacious Creed. His name's actually James okay. Creed. But that name that came to me, and I'm like, this has to have been used. This sounds like I, I must have heard this somewhere. I think I did. I just heard the phrase, right? So, I, but I looked it up, and it, there was no media called Bodacious Creed. I never heard of it, the name before, so no. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, this is really good. I I, I got to use this, you know. So I'm I'm grabbing it. So so I named him Bodacious Creed, and and uh, kind of named the thing God, and and actually I started. My actually, it's kind of my current. It is my current blog, but it was on a different site. And that old version, that's that old uh, archive, still exists. So people can go look it up. Go to my website, johnfestmeyer.com, festmeyer.com, and click on where it says blog and choose old blog. Uh, you'll go to that one, and if you go to the beginning of it, you'll see I, I chronicled the entire development of my uh, demo reel. So really, you can see the inception of Bodacious Creed from the very beginning uh, in 2010. And I go through and I talk about you know the characters and I did a these are on YouTube as well and you can see them on the blog. But they're they're not on the Wild Steampunk channel. They're on a Bodacious Creed channel. I, I did like tutorials on okay, this is how I did this and uh, you know so it was, it was kind of me just showing what I was doing uh, in creating the models, but also giving advice to other modelers and saying, look, I discovered how to do this really cool thing. I haven't seen anybody. Do it this way before, but this works really well. And so I would do that. So I actually did tutorials to help other students in my classes and stuff that, you know, to kind of share. So the blog actually goes way back, and you can see the development of this uh, for, from way back. So, but anyway, so I, I the demo reel that was finished in first version of it into 2011. I have kind of updated it since, uh, I think once or twice since then. It's been years now, but mm -hmm. and then uh, in 2013, I. I mean, as, since I was a writer anyway, I, I just, at that point, I was focused more on the modeling and, and trying to do that. Um, but in 2013, you know, done was, I was done with school. I, was having, I really was having a tough, tough time finding a job as a modeler, as a 3D model, for various reasons. But um, I uh, wanted to do a, a Kickstarter for the, to, for the book. And so... For, because I, you know, I did want to write it as a novel. I knew I could do it, so I, I did a Kickstarter. Because I, partly, I wanted to see 
I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to see uh, if I could get people, you know, who, who might be interested in this book, in this I idea for a, a novel, who would like to read it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what kind of interest would, would be out there. And um, so that was one thing. And second, um, I wanted to, to see about, I wanted to kind of give readers a chance to kind of get involved with it and do kind of do something a little bit different. And Kickstarter is a really cool way to do that. And, you know, at that time, it was 2013, there are people telling me, well, you don't kickstart a novel. And it's like, well, why not? You know? <laughs> I you know, a lot of people like, do it that way, so. It's like, no, you just write a novel, and, and then that's, you know, you don't you can't kickstart a novel. It's like, well, why not? You kickstart a, a graphic novel or a game or whatever, so. Exactly, yeah. And, and so I did it, and it worked. <laughs> so, and one of the things I was able to do is get... Uh, is offer readers input into the book as rewards. Um, so there's actually a character in the book, and, and I'm, I'm not really saying yet who it is. People can, will kind of discover it. I'll, it'll definitely be in there in the acknowledgments or whatever I'll say. This person is actually a real person for one of the characters. <laughs> because what, one person came to me and said, um, I would like to be a, a character in the book. Um, I, I have a character in the book entirely based on me. Um, can you do that? I'm like, sure. So... Uh, so, and it worked really well. So, so there's, so, and, and now we're friends too. So, so yeah, so there's one guy in the book who it, it's completely based on a real, per one character in the book completely based on a real person and he's a major character in the book. He, you know, he was a pretty big backer on the project. So, so that was really neat. I think he's going to enjoy the book when he reads it too. And it's not, and his, and his character isn't, I don't think he wanted him to be anyway. His character is not perfect. He does kind of good things and bad things in the book. And, um, but, but that was fun. It, so, so there was that, there was another character that was uh, created that, you know, one of the perks was just being able to kind of name a character. So, but the only person who really, several people paid at that level, but only one person actually used that. And we got a, a, another main character created through there who I, I didn't originally have in mind. I, I mentioned earlier there was an animal character that I created for the demo reel. Mm -hmm. Yes. I didn't think that character was going to show up in this book when I started writing it. And it, it kind of showed up, and eventually it did. And so um, I don't want to give that away either, although if you go to my website and look at the demo reel, you'll see it. And, uh, you know, uh, you will see it is in the demo reel. Um, and then that, yeah, it, it shows up probably two thirds into the book. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, there it is. That makes sense. That that works. And it worked out really well. And so this is, that's where I am now. So it's taking me longer to write than I thought. Uh, a lot of that has to do with that the book first turned out longer than I expected it to be. It's, it's still longer. It, the, the first draft came to 140,000 words, which most first novels, most for genre fiction, like science fiction, fantasy, most first novels are about 80,000 words. So that should give you an idea of, mm -hmm. you know, how right. long first draft of this was. This isn't actually my first novel. It's my first steampunk novel. I've written fantasy. I have some fantasy novels out. Oh, okay. So it came up really long. It's gotten it's gotten shorter, which is typical. I, I discovered that I was just in the in the first draft. Partly it was me working things out. I it was kind of giving a, um, too much exposition, so a lot of that got cut out. And I was kind of doubling information. I would I would explain something, and I'll kind of explain it again later because I was <laughs> I had already. And you know I'm finding that one. so it's it's down to it got down to about twelve thousand words and now it's slowly working its way up a little bit. It'll probably be I mean not twelve thousand, hundred twelve thousand. It's at about one hundred thirteen thousand now. I've got twenty three thousand words left at to, so not much. Out of sixty chapters, I have just twelve chapters to go, and those are going pretty fast. And then just the next couple drafts, or the the yeah, the, I just had a lot of editing to do after the first draft because I you know first drafts can be very rough and this one was just to make it smoother and to read better, get a better description, dialogue, all that. You know, a, a lot of, uh, there was, I did a lot of just basically complete rewriting, like every sentence rewritten. So that's why it's one reason it's taking a long time. Also, I'm a, I'm a single dad and I have a full-time job. So, you know, that's kind of taken time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, so that's why it's taken about four years instead of like one year I was very optimistically hoping for. I'm glad it's taken this long though, because it's given me time to like really develop, really develop, mm -hmm. and uh, come up with with a lot of really good ideas. Um, some of the some of the earlier ideas that I, I've made better. 
So yeah, and then once this is done, I'll be ready to start on the next book. Is it going to be a sequel, or is it just a... I think I'm going to write a series. Yeah, this is perfect series material. And I love this world, and I feel like I just have this really, really cool characters in this really cool world I came up with that's, you know, different. I mean, there are other steampunk westerns out there. There's actually even another... This There's a, a film... I don't honestly. I don't know where to find it right now, um, and I don't remember what it's called. But I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, there's. A, I, I saw a f- uh, somebody who did a film that, that they also called a steampunk zombie western. Oh, yeah. Well, now I have to go and look that up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's. I'm sure they did the zombies differently, but um, but that's. But I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, well, you know, I think pretty small genre. <laughs> yeah. Small well, well, zombies in, in western is actually quite popular. Uh, yeah, like uh, I I forget what the game series it's called. It's by the same people, Rockstar, who did uh, Grand Theft Auto, made a Red uh, Red Dead Redemption. Yes, and they have a, a zombie expansion. I haven't played that. I'd love to. It looked a lot of fun. A yeah, lot of fun. Yeah. Now, There's um, also a uh, uh, I think it's called Deadlands. There's a role playing. Yeah, game. Deadlands is a is a is a zombie it's western RPG. Zombie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, well, this is not a zombie series, but it's a really good series with no one uh, lesser than Bruce Campbell, Briscoe County Jr. I, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I, I love the series. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, there's only one season, but uh, it, it's it's a blast. It's a great series because they they use a lot of tropes, but but all those tropes they use are so wonderfully played off to. How do you say it? They're all they're, they're they're kind of parodies of known Western tropes, but then they do something that makes okay. all these characters very memorable, despite it. Like they, they had a, a, a an Elvis sheriff, for example. Oh, that's fun. That, yeah, okay. and I, that was just a great character because yeah, he was your typical Elvis impersonator, but they also did things with him that was like, okay, you wouldn't expect that from an Elvis impersonator. But that that was the thing that made him really cool, and they had a lot of such 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 pop culture references, so to speak, um, and a lot of self-referential humor. Um, especially the last episode, they already knew they were going to be cancelled, unfortunately. Uh, so they just were like, "Oh yeah, fuck it, we're, we're gonna do whatever," and and they did, and it's yeah. an awesome, awesome episode, which you just have to see to be believed because it's really. I never seen an episode in any series like it, where the actors are like, "Okay, we're gonna be cancelled, so we gotta make this one." <laughs> yeah, unless you count for the ages, but yeah. um, it's 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 relatively unknown, which is really too bad because it's Briscoe County Jr. If you can find it buy it because it's really an all they've got a wonderful dvd set uh, you can buy the full season and it's it's worth the purchase if you can find uh, it yeah i'll definitely I, i i just i see it online so as i mean as far as uh, i see info on it so I'll take, yeah, I'll yeah. Take it's it's still out there it's still out there but yeah uh, were there any specific uh, series that that influenced bodacious greed um i think what well I, i would say the dark tower in the sense you know stephen king's the dark tower in the sense that it got me that's what got me really into kind of western science fiction you know western science fiction or western influenced science fiction I don't, have you read the dark tower no no unfortunately not oh god that series is amazing and it's got i would it, it definitely has some has steampunk kind of elements too mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 amazing it's there the there's going to be a movie you know yeah i or, heard based on it so that's coming out it, although the it's going to be different than i don't want to give anything away that i kind of know i know it's going to be different than the books it's not and for a reason that is actually is in the books it's, it's kind of it's hard to explain in a way i think that they're almost giving away the end of the actual books which was a big surprise although it made perfect sense um So, so that that's coming out, but it's, mm-hmm. but yeah, the main character of the Dark Tower is this gunslinger, and in his world, they're actually not from our West. They're it's you know it's a, it's another world where it is very much like the Wild West, but the gunslingers there are actually knights, and they're actually descended from King Arthur, although he's okay. called Arthur Eld in their world. And most of them are, are 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 of the line of Arthur Eld, and uh, yeah, they're they're incredible with almost supernaturally, or in some ways supernaturally good with guns, right. and like diplomats and stuff too. So they're they're I mean they're like full on knights. 
last gunslinger uh, is on a quest to basically save all the, the, the entire multiverse by protecting this tower that in his world it's an actual tower called the dark tower uh, but there are manifestations of it in different worlds but the dark tower is being threatened and is on the uh, verge of collapsing and that will actually will destroy all the multiverses and and essentially send everything to a kind of hell so he's on this quest but but so it's got this heavy Western influence. It, you know, I really like that sort of character and whatnot. So that inspired me, I think, to want to write what kind of science fiction uh, Western stuff. And, I, and, and steampunk is kind of my, you know, niche in science fiction. So my story is totally different, but that's how, how I uh, kind of got into that genre. Now, how, how did you get in, in steampunk in general? Just, I just liked it, <laughs> you know? And I, I got into it with because uh, I, you know, I wanted to do the steampunk. Um, I just really have always liked it. So when I in 2010, when I started the my thesis project, my my demo reel project, um, I wanted to to do a, a steampunk theme, and then you know from from then on, I've just been really into it and obviously active in it because I was working on a big steampunk related project and um, kind of just gone on to to this day. So right. yeah. Are you active within the steampunk community, or are you just writing? No, I, I am. I actually have interviewed a bunch of different people in the steampunk community for my uh, for my blog. I've interviewed five of the people from the show Steampunked. Uh, I've interviewed people in um, cosplayers, uh, steampunk cosplayers. I've gone to uh, a couple of steampunk, um, or at least steampunk related events. I really want. There's one I really wanted to go to this year and wasn't able to. So, like, so last year, in 2016, my son and I went to the Edwardian Ball. It's based on the uh, works of Edward Gorey, and it's really more specifically Edwardian, but a lot of steampunks go. So yeah, there's, that's there's in a, New or the, the one in New Orleans, right? Or, there is, there's one in New Orleans. It, it's in New Orleans now. It started in San Francisco. Uh, okay. Right. And San Francisco and Southern California, actually Los Angeles. So we went to the Los Angeles one. And this year, they also brought it to New Orleans. I know Phoebe uh, Darkling went to yeah, that. Exactly, I wanted yeah. to mention that. Yeah, yeah was was active in, in that. So, um, <clears throat> so last year we were actually invited uh, as guests, and I helped promote it on my blog. Uh, we weren't able to go this year. Last year we also went to um, to Wild West Steam Fest. There, there's one. Yeah, the Wild West Steam Fest is in. Um, Santa Ana, California, which is near where we live, and it's a one just a one day event. It's at the Heritage Museum of Orange County, which has kind of a, got a kind of very Western feel, and you know, so it's it's not huge. Well, it's, it's kind of big, but it's not like a full on Western town, but kind mm -hmm. of close. It's like you know, to that, and it's uh, so there. Are, you know, a lot of vendors there, um, a few um, uh, panels, food carts come in, and and uh, almost everybody's dressed in Wild West, you know, steampunk. So that was fun. So we went to that last year, and then Deus Ex Vapor and Machina, the the band or D E V M, yeah. uh, played periodically during the day. They played like four times, with wow. like four sets. I think like every two hours, they did a, a, a like a twenty or thirty minute set. And after the event was over, if you paid extra, there's a concert at the end, and it was uh, Steam Power Giraffe. So we got to see Steam Power Giraffe last year. They played this year too, and I really wanted to go this year, but we just this year we just couldn't afford it. I, it took forever for my taxes to come in, and it was oh, yeah. too late for that to be, for us to be able to go to that anyway. For my you know tax refund, yeah, it took forever. But I, I do have a new. I did get a new computer, um, which I've been really needing uh, for my uh, to be able to do. Uh, videos because my previous computer was stalling and you'll see on some of my videos just the the video is out of sync with the audio so eventually yeah, I, just, I, I, I also remember you mentioning something like that in one of your videos yeah so I have a new I have a new computer now so that and that's worked really well for the last few videos I've done so mm -hmm. yeah um, and you know it's good for you know any steampunk related art stuff I do and things like that so um, yeah, so we've been able to go to to a couple of events and, and definitely want to be able to go to more. I, I used to go to, uh, you know, in years past, I, I I went to a lot of conventions, but since my, you know, it's been it's been a long time. It's been about uh, nine years since I've been able to, eight years since I've been able to go to many. So it's just hard to afford kind of um, 
I'm hard to go with just just me and my son. Um, although you know, yeah, I'm looking forward to to being able to in the future when we when I'm making more money. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, yeah, speaking of the future you're, you're working on your book, when do you hope to, to have it dulled on? I, uh, you, when do I hope to have it out, even published? Yeah. Uh, at this point, maybe a month or so. Okay. Yeah. And then, so now's, you know, a really, now's a really good time for people to sign up for my newsletter. If you, you can just go to John Festmeyer. I'm sure you'll have this in the links. Yes, I will. To go to johnfestmeyer.com after like. Either in there, uh, you can sign up at the bottom, or after like 45 seconds, a uh, uh, light box comes up. You just need your email address. I do have some really cool freebies, and I've got another one in the works right now. So the first one is a short story that is a prequel to Bodacious Creed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you kind of want a taste of that world, and uh, want to read a story that that happens a little bit before uh, the novel, and um, we'll introduce some important characters and whatnot. And concepts, um, sign up and you'll get that story like right away. If that the a link will come, and I, I have it. You can di download it for Kindle or PDF. All right. Yeah. And a few days later, uh, you can you get to read eight of my fantasy short stories from from years ago, but you, you know uh, other stories I wrote. And then I send out a newsletter about every two weeks or so, kind of updating people on what's new in the blog and and how the book's going. Subscribers will get an email when. Uh, actually, probably several emails over over time to to let let them know Bodacious Creed is out. So, um, so so that's that's a really good thing to sign up for. Whenever I have a new freebie, everybody on the email list who's already on it will all, will also get it. It won't just be for new subscribers. But I'm we're working on I'm working on right now. My um so my uncle who backed the project and has been kind of really into the the idea of the the book since I came up with it. So he's he's one of my first readers, actually, my, yeah, one, one of my first readers, but like the most active. Right. And he's been reading the book. He's been helping me make sure that everything is consistent. So he's been going through the drafts. Um, uh, so that really helps. It really helps to have another pair of eyes. And he uh, studied un uh, at one point under uh, Gunsmith. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah, so I had this idea of having, and I didn't know how it would actually work. I just put it in the book. You know the the guns in my world hold more bullets than they did then. So mm -hmm. Creed's guns are, are are sixteen shooters, but they're also revolvers. <laughs> so, but you can't really do sixteen bullets in you know in a revolver like that. Uh, so my uncle came up with two different designs for guns that could do that. That that actually would work with the technology of the time. And one of those, uh, the ones that Creed ends up with in the end, the better ones, where I. Uh, he actually drew up, um, wrote up a bunch of notes for it. my his his daughter, my cousin, who also read the book, is drawing up the um, kind of drawing it in a in a kind of more readable way. And we're going to schematic for it. And I'm either going to just use what she gives me, or I'm going to uh, create a 3D model of it and and then kind of use that. But I'm going to basically I plan to create a schematic of how that gun works, um, and then that'll be a freebie for readers. And I think you know. I and uh, I think people will not not that I'm encouraging people to go make guns or something, but <laughs> but I think they'd be interested, you know, in in how my world and how his 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 16 shooters work. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it sounds interesting. I mean, uh, there are yeah. a lot of successful uh, YouTube channels like that with all the such experimental weapons. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, I I'm think sure there's like, interest for it. Yeah, yeah. So I think they'd uh, I think people will get a kick out of that. She's working on that, and I understand the concept of how of how it works. I mean, you know, they've explained it to me. I think I understand it pretty well. But it's going to help to have that uh, schematic, and then I'll just like I said, I'll decide if I'm gonna, um, you know, because with my 3D modeling, I can I can create it and I can render images in a way that that they look like drawings. So and then I can show you know the inner workings and the and the concept behind it and and stuff like that. So plenty of reasons to shine up for the newsletter. I hear. Yes. Yeah. So definitely do that. And, and like I said, you'll also get updates. You get updates on when there are new things in the blog. So like every couple blog posts, you get a, a newsletter. Um, I'll talk about what I've got on the blog and on my YouTube channel, so people can can go check everything out. All right. Well, well uh, we have a tradition here on the show that we end with uh, some words of inspiration. Uh, so do you have some for the listeners back home? Oh boy, uh, words of inspiration. Let's see, well, what kind of advice might I give myself? 
I think it's easiest for me to give inspiration to writers because even though I've got a you know a master's in animation and visual effects, I've been I've been writing all my life, and so and you know I'm, I'm glad I came back to it. If I I think if uh, my advice to myself if I were younger would really be, it's okay to to, to you know experiment in in, in different um, uh, creative areas, but find one that is your primary focus. And you can let your other things kind of support that. So for me, that would be writing. And then the artwork I do, it kind of supports my, my writing or my written worlds. Uh, learn, learn how to market yourself. Yeah, no matter what, whatever you do. If you're, you know, I know makers and I know artists and things. And, and being able to market yourself is really important. And for that, the main thing is being able to build a mailing list. <laughs> so that's the kind of practical advice I could have used years ago. So you know, I'm, I'm building my, you know, I'm build your brand, and but that's how you do it. Is you, you really need to be able to have direct contact to the people who are interested in what you do. You don't share your list with other people or anything. It's you know, these are people who trust you. Get that going because it, it allows you to to to, con- to kind of contact your tribe rather than having them have you know kind of have to have them chance onto or luck onto it through you know uh, social media you know you can reach right. definitely reach people that way too but it's it's not the same no 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 i'm now i'm actually considering uh, creating a, a mailing list of my own actually so yeah for the the people who are listening back home to sign off the episode uh, subscribe to my channel it would be a nice uh, birthday gift to me with that being said i thank my guest uh, jonathan fismeyer for being here uh, i wish him the best of luck with his upcoming book and for all you people out there as always make it your way seven eight hit it